For anyone who knows the comic Spotlight RC, you probably know the controversy surrounding it. Spotlight RC is a Transformers comic for the IDW continuity running from 2005 to 2018, a story focusing on the origin of the character RC. This story was written in 2008 and explains to us how the first female Transformer came to be. So with all other robots using he, why does this one use she? What we will do today is actually go through the short comic together and summarize the events so that we are on the same page before we discuss what makes this comic sexist and transphobic. I believe that RC's backstory in this comic is sexist and transphobic, but I will explain why afterward. And first, let us also consider the comic writer's own stance. On TF Wiki, find in the production notes this. This spotlight controversially aimed to give a reason for why Transformers have genders, something Furman thought didn't make sense for robots that don't produce sexually. It is not considered by him to be a story about RC's gender being changed or touching on any trans issues, both things fans had brought up at the time. As to him, there was no gender. However, one can still write sexist or transphobic work even unintentionally no matter what your gender is as the author. Female writers can be guilty of the same thing. Male writers can do better jobs such as James Roberts of Lost Light. Let's really focus on the problems in this content. We need to recognize the messages the story presents to the reader and how it changes their worldviews. It is not just a story about alien robots fighting a war, because these characters are very similar to humans. So if you present gender-changing robots negatively, the result will be your readers can perceive gender-changing humans that way. An author has a responsibility to consider more than their story, but its effect. But let's go no further without summarizing the comic. Spotlight RC. Here is a little summary at the start. Mad, bad, and dangerous to know. That's RC. Autobot by allegiance, but just totally out of control. An untamable, unrestrained force of nature with tactics and ethics that would put many a Decepticon to shame. Having waged a vitriolic war against a perceived enemy for many years, RC was finally brought to task and incarcerated. Driven by personal demons and a severe mental trauma, RC is now considered just too dangerous to ever be let loose. But sometimes, desperate times call for desperate measures. Now let's continue. In an assaulted laboratory, RC charges through fire and body parts on the floor with a weapon in hand. From her fanged mouth, RC screams the name Giaxis, someone so evil and vile that she shall burn all his work. Ultra Magnus looks down at her rampage and claims that this has to stop. RC resists and hurls light bombs at Ultra Magnus. She races up the stairs and Ultra Magnus calls for her, saying that he is not her enemy, but wants to know why she is leaving a trail of carnage across the galaxy. RC does not explain, but says that Giaxis is too dark to describe if you haven't experienced him. RC will be the one to stop him. RC attacks Ultra Magnus with a fiery electric sword, but it turns out he was a hologram. The real Ultra Magnus leaps around a corner and attacks. As they fight, RC claims it isn't personal, but Ultra Magnus is just in the way of her and Giaxis. Ultra Magnus throws a shock grenade, knocking them both down. Ultra Magnus rises first and takes RC away before two mysterious yellow bots enter the laboratory. They contact Giaxis and report that the Autobots are gone and the Negacore was not found. Giaxis will prepare for the expansion. Much later, in the prison Garrus 9, Fortress Maximus looks at the encaged sparks of prisoners. The souls of the Transformers are marked by name, and we see RCs. The scene changes to Fortress Maximus asking Jetfire how soon before their six new prisoners will be stripped to their sparks. The prisoners they have now combine into Monstructor, and each of them are molecularly changed and hardwired with the urge to destroy. Jetfire says that they won't be able to isolate the sparks of the experiments like normal. Elsewhere, a fleet of spaceships are traveling. Some Decepticons plan to attack the prison to capture the six combining Transformers so that they can use them for their own purposes. Garrus 9 is heavily stormed and Fortress Maximus calls for additional aid. In desperation, Fortress Maximus releases the Berserker Autobot prisoner RC to help fight. 
RC is peaceful when stripped of her body and no more than a floating soul in a case. Her pain and rage fade, she is serene. Then all that pain and rage returns when Fortress Maximus puts her back into her body. He explains that they are under attack and need her help. He tempts her with the name Geaxis, explaining that the six prisoners are experiments of Geaxis who they need to keep from being stolen. Fortress Maximus has put a case around her spark so that he can release her under the threat that he can remotely crush her spark if she tries to run or if she attacks other Autobots. The Autobots are losing and the Combaticons come in for the kill. Then, RC sails in like a crazed vampire. They recognize RC and while one Combaticon is frightened, the other is not. RC takes them down while the Autobot trader who called in the Decepticons to Garrus 9 tries to release the six prisoners. Fortress Maximus comes in and fetches Jetfire, but the six prisoners escape. RC claims that she can stop the Combiners and she can find them because she feels a link to Geaxis and all his experiments. This is where RC explains her past with the evil scientist Geaxis. She points out that Jetfire and Fortress Maximus have been saying she this whole time without even realizing it. RC says that Transformers use he without thinking of it, that it is the pronoun of choice, but with RC, they use she because they unconsciously sense a difference in her. RC says that Geaxis forcibly experimented on her and changed her DNA in order to introduce gender into their species just because he wanted to. Then, Geaxis abandoned her, dissatisfied with the experiment, and her insanity comes from contradictory sensory input. Now, RC swears revenge and will destroy anything Geaxis ever touched. Fortress Maximus tells her to stop, but Jetfire says they should let her go. Fortress Maximus almost feels sorry for Geaxis because the ferocious warrior is now coming for him. So that is the end of the comic, an explanation of why RC hates Geaxis and why she is, at the time of this writing, the only she using Transformer. But after 2008, you see that there are many other female Transformers introduced into the story who are not experiments but Transformers characters from Colony Worlds. The continuity decided that this was a more inclusive decision because otherwise, they were just not ever writing any female characters. And people like female characters, and you have a large female audience. If this is material for human entertainment, always discluding one group is kind of a rude move saying that people like you don't belong in the story. So the entire lore shifted, saying that Transformers started adopting gender after they saw gender in alien species. It's a bit of a weird assumption that aliens besides human would have male and female, but that was the reasoning in IDW. Some of the robots thought that she was a better word to describe them. Cybertronians used to have he and she, but lost she in its isolation, while other Cybertronian colony worlds kept using both in their language. Characters like Anode and Lug from Lost Light are trans characters because they used to use he, then learned about alien gender, and they liked she for themselves, thus changed their pronouns and even modified their bodies to something they liked better. Other Cybertronians who do not understand this gender culture are confused, which is why a node explains it. So that leads to the question, what was changed in RC exactly? It's actually about to get really confusing. Let's just quickly examine how RC's backstory was revised to follow the new universe rules and combat the controversy of the original story. In Optimus Prime issue 25, published in 2018 a decade later, RC retells her Geaxis story to the human Marisa Fairborn. RC says that she was born male, but it did not match her spark soul. She came to a scientist named Geaxis to ask for help to modify her body, but he altered her DNA and abandoned her. So Geaxis had tampered with her in a way she did not want and damaged her body, meaning that the original story of him forcing her to have gender is gone now. RC wanted to be a she, yet now that completely clashes with how angry she was in Spotlight RC about being called a she. IDWRC no longer has a coherent backstory, but it isn't the retcon's fault alone because everything here about gender makes no sense. 
First, he versus genderless. This topic I've covered before in my video, why female transformers should exist. Male and female are both genders. We know that, right? He is the pronoun of masculinity, while she is the pronoun of femininity. Therefore, by using he, you have already given your transformers gender. The writer of Spotlight RC claims that the robots are genderless, so why is it that he is genderless and she is gendered? Well, this writer in particular is known for arguing that female transformers don't make sense. His belief is so firm that it has its own section on his wiki page. But he also has a special blog post in response to the controversy about his comic, so we can read his explanations. It is fair to read them, but I still do not agree with them for reasons I will explain. For context, his post is in response to the writer of the IDW Windblade comic because he feels that she had unfairly accused him of sexist and transphobic writing. They have since talked through their feelings, but Scott found it important in her writing that Windblade not be female by accident or by force or against her will or just for kicks. So the author's post explained that he was not pleased with the retconning, perceiving it as offensive to story writers and to the audience whenever retconning occurs. The writer felt wrongly accused of standing out to be offensive to women and trans people, and to say that he was, by another comic writer, was a personal attack. Scott has since updated her original claims about the writer of Spotlight RC. The writer of RC's backstory feels that the meaning of his story is being missed, that Transformers are genderless and RC is not an insane freak because she is female, but because she was a traumatized experiment. Now compare RC in Spotlight RC versus the retcon. In 2008, RC in Spotlight RC is not a transgender robot like a node and lug from Lost Light. RC was male and did not want to change, so to be changed was traumatic for her. The writer says the stress she feels is like a trans person being forced to be a gender they don't want to be. This makes sense, no one wants to be forced to undergo changes. So the retcon, years later, changed RC to be a trans female robot. That now means she was born male and wanted to be female. In that version, RC's trauma isn't related to being in the wrong body, it's now just related to being tortured and having her DNA damaged. So to recap, in Spotlight RC, RC was cisgender, was a he, wanted to stay a he. Following that, writers made her transgender, was a he, wanted to be a she. Why did that happen? Do you know why that happened? I will explain it. The gender change in Spotlight RC is undeniably troubling as a plot device. People in the real world know less about trans people than they do about gay people, for example. When people socially change their genders or pursue surgeries, it is more controversial and less understood. Although this comic was written in 2008, people to this day and last week as I write this do not understand what makes Spotlight RC problematic. People do not understand how transitioning surgeries work. They scare people. I can almost guarantee you that every trans person who looks into how to get surgery has been told by other people that they will regret it. That it's terrible, that they're damaging their body, that their personality and mind are going to change, and they won't be the same person anymore. I have been told these things myself. I have been asked to not do it because in many places, gender aligning surgeries are presented as permanent and terrible, as though it will ruin your life. People don't understand how important transitioning is for a trans person's peace of mind, and they wrongly assume that surgeries happen right away and that it is even one single surgery. First, you have to be on hormones before they let you do surgeries. You have to be a certain age, so no, kids are not transitioning physically. You have to be diagnosed with gender dysphoria. You need doctors to write letters of recommendation, and then you get put on waiting lists. You can be waiting for a surgery for a year at least, and that's just one surgery of many, with all the time to rethink and quit. It is not easy to rapidly change yourself and there are obstacles in the way to make sure that the transitioning person is certain. Transitioning is not scary, but people think it is. I had a former partner insist that my entire personality would change just like RC's did when Jaxis experimented on her. So in a world so ignorant about how transitioning works, if you show transitioning from one gender to another as a negative damaging experience, you are impacting how trans people are treated. 
Your readers are going to leave Spotlight RC thinking that changing your gender can be very harmful, and either that a trans person can be making a mistake doing surgery, or that no one should ever do these surgeries. No matter the author's intentions, the story was harmful because it fed a bad perception of gender transitioning. If you are not trans, it is easy to brush off our feelings as overly sensitive because you are not facing the impact. Misrepresentation in media from this comic to shows like Family Guy and South Park matter because showing transitioning in inaccurate and negative manners is often the only exposure someone ever gets to transitioning. This comic supplies only more unconscious evidence that bad things happen in gender aligning surgeries. Ultimately, this story can't be fixed and retconning just made nothing match up. Even the retcon doesn't make sense. Nothing makes sense because gender and sex is completely misunderstood. The writer of Spotlight RC himself had no comprehension of gender versus biological sex and wrongly uses gender in writing and in his blog post. So the writer describes his character RC as cisgender male, or let's say what he means, a genderless robot who uses he. If RC is he, wants to be he, then that is what RC is regardless of her body. Giaxis did not change her spark, so if you are telling us this character is he at heart, that is RC's gender. Therefore, you the writer must respect that and describe RC as male and use he. And you focus on how RC tells other characters, I am a he, do not judge my body type. In the writer's blog post, he writes RC as she because of her body type which is fully misgendering his own character as he describes her. It is a reveal that this author does not understand trans issues if he doesn't know how trans works. Now in regard to RC's physical changes, what changed that would have made her biologically female? Let's go with the claim that RC's gender is male. Okay, now tell me what made her sex female. What the heck can that mean? We're still assuming that Transformers are asexual unless you are telling me that Giaxis made RC capable of getting pregnant or something. So the implication is that other Transformers are sexless and now RC is sexual. Somehow. Only her DNA is mentioned being changed, though we may assume her body shape also, but how do you determine that RC was made female in a species that lacks sex chromosomes? You can totally mess with a robot's DNA, yet there is no standard for what makes them now female. We are also being told that RC's DNA change in her cells can also be sensed by other robots and make them instinctively call her she. There is no logic to it. The entire story makes no sense and it encourages ignorance around gender transitioning surgeries and it ignorantly claims that physical changes make gender. Uh, again, if RC is a he inside, no physical changes will change that, and if you the author claim your character is one gender, you must not completely misgender them outside of their story. The sexism issue is not nearly as hard to explain, just consider that the writer had the freedom to write RC's origin story however he wanted. If you are told that you must write a story to explain the first female Transformer, how would you do it? Out of all the possibilities, this writer decided that the first female Transformer would be an insane experiment who hated being female. That is another real rude move doing that. Your first female character the readers see is fanged, insane, just an image of rage that hates herself. She breathes through gritted teeth, she, like the other characters have just been saying an insult. She hates her female body so much that the only peace she feels is when she is separated from her body. The reader's perception matters so much here because when I read this story for the first time, I did not like it. It was upsetting to see the first female Transformer despise being referred to as she and hating her body that much. And as a trans person, to see a torture scene of gender transitioning made me worried that people were going to think that this was the kind of thing I was putting myself into. The author of Spotlight RC may know better, but his audience does not. When you have the freedom to make up the first female Transformers origin story, choose anything else but this. Care about your audience, tell a story that doesn't leave bad messages. That's all, find more information in the links in the description below.